It's the NFL on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Seattle Seahawks and the New York Giants. And it's kicking off next on Madden NFL 24. It's a picturesque afternoon for football in the Northeast, and EA Sports comes to you from MetLife Stadium just across the Hudson River from New York City. Well, the first month of the season has flown by. We are on to October. We've got a captivating matchup in store as it will be the Seattle Seahawks taking on the New York Giants. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, these Giants seem to be a team on the improve. They won their first playoff game since Super Bowl 46 last year. Now, what needs to happen to take that next step? They just need to continue to amass talent get those guys going and become contributors and on the offensive side of the ball become much more explosive in the passing game meanwhile for the visiting seahawks most of the pundits yourself included charles gave their draft class high marks and that comes after a year where they struck gold in the fifth round with Tariq woolen and they also struck gold in the offensive line getting brand new tackles at left and right struck gold with a running back who was a big time runner as a rookie yeah, there's something to be said about building through the draft. Seems like we were just starting training camp, but here we are in October, and off we go on EA Sports. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. And the Giants ready to go now on offense. And under center is the man in possession of a new contract for 2023 and beyond. In his fifth season now, Daniel Jones. Playing for his Giants career, Jones' best season as a starter didn't come with huge numbers as a passer. He was just the guy his team needed him to be. Someone who could threaten the defense throwing it, and especially as a runner. Now the NFC's leading rusher a season ago. Here's Saquon Barkley. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. That's a gain of 13 and a very solid opening play for this offense. That runs successful in large part because they had a lot of extra help blocking up front. Yeah, you've got guys who can do that very, very well. In addition, they can catch the football. So sometimes when they line up with three tight ends, it's not necessarily to run it. And that gives you an advantage when you do decide to barrel off the line of scrimmage and block people downfield. And that's going to be another first down. Good running for him to start the drive. This one, 11 yards. It's a gain of 11 and a giant first down. Absolutely no trouble moving the ball on the ground on the first two plays from scrimmage. Absolutely. You know what I really like? Same guy carrying the ball in both plays. And what drives me crazy is when a back has a nice run. He taps his helmet to go out of the game. I would want the ball again and again and again because you've established really nice momentum and now you're seeing the field really well. Three yards on the pickup there and it'll be second down. Now Jones. And he short arms that one just a bit. It's low and incomplete. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test them early. But it proved up to the task and forced the incompletion. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Throwing Jones. So many times we've seen him try to escape the pocket and do something with his legs, but in this case, the pressure was too intense and he made the wise choice to just get rid of the football and make sure no one was going to get it. On fourth down, Jamie Gillen on to punt for the Giants. And back deep is DJ Dallas. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12-yard line. So the Seahawks ready to take over on offense, and it is a first-time Pro Bowler who leads him out, Charles, in his 11th year now, Geno Smith. 
When the Seahawks named Smith the starter last season, it gave him an opportunity he wasn't sure he would get again. And then he became one of the best quarterbacks in football and sustained it across a full 17 games when he come back player of the year. Saved his career with last season and keeps the Seahawks as true contenders. Now Smith and the Seahawks going to come up first and 10 at their own 12-yard line. Throwing now is Geno. He's going to get this complete here to lock it. And he gets this one just shy of the 35 to the 34. 23 yards on the play. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Smith. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Part of what we're seeing so far is the defense is certainly coordinated. Both levels doing their jobs in tandem. The back helping the front, the front helping the back. The pressure got home on that last play and forced him to try and throw through contact and short of the sticks. Smith. That's to the rookie Jackson Smith and Jigma. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. And they'll let their fullback try and push the pile. And I don't think he got there, no. He's short by maybe a foot, maybe. Call it fourth and inches. The Seahawks will call on Michael Dixon on fourth down to pump this one away. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. So the Giants getting the football back here for their second drive. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. start out on the ground it's Saquon Barkley and he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three now second and seven from the 23 looking to throw Jones Seahawk defense gets to him and they bring him down. And that sack, it goes to Boye Mafe. And this is what you've got to do against a quarterback like him. You've got to keep him in the pocket and not let him get to the perimeter because once he gets outside, that's where he can really hurt you. After that sack, third and long, tough spot for Jones and the Giants. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. This one goes out wide for Barkley. And he's out right at the 25. They'll get 11, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. Well, the good thing about covering any game I do with you is I know that there's no problem with rhythm. Now, what we're watching offensively, a little bit of a problem there. Yeah, punt on the first drive, looking at another one here. Just a little slow. And, you know, they, they were talking about a fast start, but that hasn't been the case. Yeah, and let's face it. Any team we cover always talks about a That's fast true. start. That's true. But it's not necessarily going to happen just because they say so. And whether it's the script, whether it's, you know, just what they're going through, whether they're seeing different defenses, they're going to have to figure it out as this game moves on.
Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Now Gino. This complete to Lockett. They showed off the athletic juke. Good little gain there. Not a whole lot of real estate, but a nice carry. Second down and four. Out of the gun, Smith. He'll find Metcalf. And Metcalf going to have the Seahawks first down as he'll get this up to midfield. A first catch of the ball game there for Metcalf. And a first down to boot. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. on the 50-yard line. Here's second and nine. From the 50, it's Smith. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one, forced the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Freeze up your guys elsewhere. Throwing on third down, Smith. The throw on the run, but that's going to be incomplete. Well, the incompletion, but now we also have an injured player. We'll get an update when we return to MetLife Stadium. down, ready to punt, Michael Dixon. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. And New York set to take the field. And partner, I know so far, and we're still in the first half, but you love this game as a defensive guy, zero to zero. We'll see if the offense can get going on this drive. Well, you know how they talk about music to your ears? How about what it does for your eyes when you watch something like this, right, where these teams are locked in and going at it, no points going up on the scoreboard. I'm loving it. You're exactly right. Well, switch over, though, to an offensive mindset for a moment. What do they need to do here to get on track and get some points? Well, I think a couple of ways. Number one, you pull out something that maybe they haven't seen before. Coaches always talk about unscouted looks. Maybe you give them something that they haven't seen on tape and now you shock them that way. The second, run your basic playbook, but run it so well that you give your skill position guys a chance to make big plays individually. From the 24, Jones. And that's incomplete. Absolutely nowhere to go with the football, and he's just going to put this one in the Hudson River. Maybe he's a little fortunate he didn't get called for grounding because that one was well over everyone's head. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Back to throw. Jones. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards the play. We often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds it for the first down.
A first down carry for Barkley. And no room that time, getting it to about the 46. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. That felt like a trap because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball carry before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. Second down, here's Barkley again. And he's up across midfield and down into Seattle territory. 43 yards rushing for him now to this point. That's another good run, and he's having an excellent day. And right now, I don't think his team could have any more confidence in handing him the football. Here now, third and a yard. They'll try to run for it with Barkley. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 32. Give him the third down conversion, five yards on the play. After a couple of seasons of battling injuries, the former number two overall pick returned to Pro Bowl IV with over 1,300 yards and 10 touchdowns. Just as important, played 16 games and handled over 350 touches, essentially carrying the Giants' offense. Blitz coming and down he goes. Eugenia and Wosu got the sack there. Uh, the Seahawks signed to Wosu last free agency. Believe he can be the top edge rusher and make plays like that. Look for a team. Nine and a half sacks, three forced fumbles last season. Certainly seems like a smart investment on their part. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Jones with a handoff to Barkley. He's able to get four back on the run, but now they'll have to find something here on third and about 14. I think that run gives us evidence that the defense is getting a little bit tired out there. They've been out in the field for a long time, and that last run, they just cut right through them. Ninth play of the drive coming up, and certainly not an easy one on third and long. Looking to throw. Jones, nowhere to go here. He lost the football, and the Seahawks have picked it up. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. Well, that's a down and distance coaches always talk about trying to avoid, isn't it? I mean, that's third and long, and you just know they're pinning their ears back and coming after him sometimes even with extra pressure. And he, he knew that. I mean, he, he knew they were coming. He just fumbled it. Yeah, he knew it. The offensive line knew it. Everyone did, yet the pressure was still there, and he ended up coughing it up. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They run with a second year man, it's Kenneth Walker. And he'll go down at the 28. They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. Play action, it's Smith. This one goes underneath to Walker, and he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. We often talk about understanding the playbook, understanding progressions, and understanding what the defense is doing. We saw all of that on that play. Great recognition and understood where his running back was going to be. Found a way to have him leak out underneath, hit him with the football, and they picked up the first down. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. On second down, it's Walker. Shifts by him, and he'll get about five here as he'll take this down inside the 20-yard line. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence 
to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. Now Smith, that one too wide and incomplete. Tight defense there on third down, but what a product of good coaching and even better execution because he realized he's in field goal range, no sense forcing anything, and he made sure he didn't. On comes the Seahaw kicker here on fourth down. It's Jason Myers. It'll be from the right hash, and it'll be a 36-yarder. Myers' kick is good, and the Seahawks grab a 3-0 lead. So the defense are able to force their first turnover of the game, and then they add on to that by getting the field goal. And you don't just want to take the ball away from your opponent, partner. You want to make them hurt as well. And if you don't score yourself on defense, turn it over to your offense and have them put points on the board. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. And from his end zone, here's Gary Brightwell. And he's going to be taken down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. 3 0 after one on EA Sports. Ready to roll for the second quarter from MetLife Stadium. The Giants with the football as they get set to start their drive with a first and ten. The Giants offense at the line, ready to begin their next drive. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though, when they only gave up the field goal? And they were able to trot back out on the field to start this drive. A little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown. But they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach will just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think the coach will be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield and punch in the end zone without turning it over. And he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. That's a really good job right there. Just kept stringing that play out, pushing further and further towards the sideline. Really good fundamentals by that defense. He was trying to put his foot in the ground and turn up field. He just couldn't. No, they really had a picket fence in front of him. No room to find to get upfield. Now Jones, and that will be incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early, and now it's fourth down. So many times we talk about coverage, we're just talking about the defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. And here's Gillen on now to punt as he gets this one away. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return, and it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their 35-yard line. Here's Walker to start the drive. And not much doing. He'll get this only up to about the 36. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Watching that play unfold and watching him complete it brought back memories of doing all those pursuit drills to make sure you don't over-pursue and let a guy get a cutback lane on you. He did that very well. You praised him on tape yesterday for the angles that he takes to the ball. Took a great angle right there. Now quickly here to Smith and Jigba. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And now two yards to go on third down. Two minutes gone by, second quarter. They'll try for the first with Walker. And this is not going to be enough. Was in search of two yards and only got halfway there. 
Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. Here's Michael Dixon now to punt. And he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. This is taken around the 12. Call it an even 40-yard punt, 7-0 on the return. And it'll be giant football first and 10. The offense takes the field, and we turn our attention to Saquon Barkley. He's doing his thing. He's got some good yardage, but his team right now in the second quarter, zero points. Just not a complete formula. Half of it's there, being able to run the ball and set the tone. What if they may have to go to some play action, throw off the run game, and try and get the ball in the end zone? I was just going to ask you that same thing. Maybe you use that run now to set up the pass, right? I would think so, because the run has been very effective for them. They begin with a run by Barkley. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. They'll come up second and six now from the 24. They'll run it again with Barkley. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. I know at times today's NFL sure feels like everything's about the guy throwing the football. But if you get a guy who can run it and move it and gain this type of yardage, you'll take him each and every time. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Off the play fake, Jones. Open target here, Darius Slayton. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a gain of 11 and a giant first down. Up the middle with Barkley. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. <laughs> I know we can't hear what's going on in that huddle right now, but I'll guarantee you at least one offensive lineman is saying, my bad, we simply couldn't move him off the line of scrimmage. We've got to do a better job trying to root those guys out of there. From the 44-yard line, here's second down and eight. Barkley inside handoff. They follow up the gain of two with a gain of one that time. The Giants on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and seven. Back to throw. Jones. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawks defense. Daryl Taylor got in there to drop him. Taylor making a strong play, and despite getting fewer than half the snaps last season, still improved considerably in year two. Nine and a half sacks, four forced fumbles. He's officially an anchor of his team's pass rush. On fourth down, here's Jamie Gillen on to punt. Thirty-five yards that time on the punt, and they will take over first and ten. Now the ball now going back over the Seattle Seahawks offense. No points last time out. They were forced to punt, if you remember, but no time to dwell on that. They've still got the lead here and a chance to add to that here. First and 10 as this new drive starts. Now Smith and the Seahawks going to come up first and 10, just shy of the 30. Geno now to throw. It's caught. Lock it. And yeah, they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. First 
Walker now on first and 10. And slow going there as he'll only get a yard, maybe up to the 41. If you're looking for glory, looking to get your name in the headlines, you do not want to play nose tackle. But how about what we just saw there? The ability to hold people up, take on extra blocks, and actually slip them and make a tackle on that play. That's big time. Here's Smith now on second down. And he couldn't get that one to his man. Short of him, it's low and incomplete. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Now Smith. Yeah, almost, but not quite. Needed 10, he got nine. Fourth down. Well, he was looking at a dime formation. Six defensive backs on the field. So he's looking for anyone, anyone to throw the football to. But he didn't have anyone open, so he took off and ran for it. But he came up just short, and that brings up fourth down. Now here's Michael Dixon. He'll boot it away from about his 35. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted and spotted at the 14-yard line. And New York set to take the field. See if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled-out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter? run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm okay with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. Credit the tackle there to Uchina Nuwosu. Second and nine. They'll go to Barkley again. And from the 15, they're able to work this up to the 20 for a pickup of a handful. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Looking to throw, Jones. And he's going to be brought down back in his own six-yard line. How about corner Kobe Bryant coming in to make the sack? But Charles, this has been something to watch so far. This is where you really feel for a quarterback. He's been running for his life in this first half. Brandon, that's five sacks already, so you know he's got to be saying, can we get some more guys in here to block, please? Because if we don't, we're going to need another quarterback. Here's Jamie Gillen now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Now a fair catch taken just across midfield, maybe by a yard or two. A 41-yard punt there with no return, and this offense will take over right at the midfield stripe with a first and 10. Good starting field position here for the Seahawks as they come up first and 10 right at the 50-yard line. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Throw out wide to Walker. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six at its second down. Here's Smith. This is Fant on the short completion. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. 
First catch for him on the afternoon, and it results in a first down. The start for them near flawless. Defense gets him a three and out. Two quick pass connections on offense. So that's how a team works together. Just what you described. Get them the ball, give them a little momentum, and they're capitalizing off of that. Thanks a lot, guys. Out of the gun, Walker with it. And he'll snag about five yards down to the 32. Bobby McCain on the tackle. It's a game of five. It's a second and five. Second quarter, two minutes remain. Three nothing, our score. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman. Coach will have highlights and analysis of this first half, one that's featured no touchdowns as of yet on either side. So his job's a little bit easier for this halftime. Need to, give the, need to give the coach some highlights here. Yes, we do. A five-yard pass on the heels of a five-yard run. Good enough for the first. Now Smith. Under pressure, and down he goes. They sack him back at the 36. Credit that to the former Georgia Bulldog, Aziz Ojolari, getting in there to bring him down. Ojolari continuing to look like a real presence for the Giants. Five and a half sacks and three forced fumbles in only seven games in 2022. Let's see what the pace looks like for him if he's able to avoid the injury bug. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. Back to throw, Smith. Targeting the out route, and he completes this to Metcalf. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. Throwing is Smith. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. Aziz Ojulari. That is now two sacks for him here in this first half. Now that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football. Led to a sack. And that's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. And that is no good. And that will keep this a three-point game. And now two problems as I see it. First, you missed the kick, which granted was a long one. But second, you set the other guys up a great field position and enough time to maybe get downfield and get a field goal attempt of their own. The Giants offense at the line, ready to begin their next drive. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. And that one will go down in the books as just a one-play drive and then three points tacked on to the end of it. Here's second and three. Now Jones. Incomplete. And we're down to eight seconds now. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. On the draw, this is Barkley. And he's got the first down before being taken down at the 46. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. This was the old NFL record distance for decades, a 63-yard attempt. So we've come upon halftime with the visiting Seahawks. They're out in front. 
As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, back to you two in just a bit. But first, welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports Halftime Report. If you okay, coach, first half, yeah, there's not much to get you caught up on. Just the lone field goal accounting for the entirety of the scoring. So a 3 nothing game to this point, as both defenses have been strong so far. These offenses seemingly still back at the hotel for the first half. 3-0 our score as the second half gets underway. Dallas now to return it from his end zone. And able to get this out to the 25. Here comes the Seahawks offensive unit. They'll have it first to begin the third. And they've got the lead. CD, what do you think the message was at halftime? I don't think the message was too drastic, I think, at the half or that they need to change things too much. I do think the offensive line could play a little bit better. I think they'll try and help them out more. They'll probably keep a tight end in a few more times and maybe add a running back to the formation to pick up those pass rushers because they probably allowed a few too many sacks for comfort in the first half. On first down, it's Smith. It got his man complete. Down to the 10 and all the way in. Touchdown, Seattle. Tyler Lockett. 75 yards and the Seahawks come right out of the locker room and score here in the opening minute of the third quarter as a fan is there anything prettier than a well-executed post route no it's a thing of beauty especially when it's done like that for a touchdown uh, the throw the catch and how about the run after to get it to the end zone Jason Myers now for the extra point It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip. One of the shortest drives you'll ever see. One play, 75 yards, six points. After the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And their deficit a little wider than it was at halftime. Does that touchdown a minute ago change the thinking here at all? I think it does, at least a little bit, because now urgency has to start setting in. You can't go out there and go three and out and run the risk of falling behind substantially, but you have to do it without pressing, because pressing, that'll lead you into bigger errors. Jones and the Giants now with a first and 10 at their own 24. He'll find Hodgins there complete. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And it'll be second down. Throwing Jones. Defensively well done to jar that free. I'll tell you what, though, offensively, he's got to be lucky after the catch and the fumble that that didn't go too far away from him. And the way the football is shaped, it's not built to bounce true, is it? It can squirt in any direction and move in any way. He was so lucky. Thank his lucky stars he was able to get that one back. A 
First down carry for Barkley won't lead to much as he'll take this forward for maybe a yard. It's second down. And we're at the 41, second and nine. Jones fakes the give to Barkley. Oh, and that is incomplete. Oh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. That's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up, converged on his man, and broke the play up. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Operating from the gun, Jones. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. Touchdown, Giants! Paris Campbell, 59 yards. And the Giants have got it back to within a score. And he showcased his blazing speed on that one. Was he wearing football cleats or track spikes? <laughs> because he was gone. Big time play. And just think about what that does if you're a receiver on the team with him. Well, that's got to open things up for you as well because if I'm a defense, I've got to get back deeper and deeper in order to keep him in front. But I'm not sure how many can actually keep him in front with that speed. Gano the extra point, and that'll cut it to three at 10 7. Five plays there on that drive, and it was polished off by a Giants touchdown. Touchdown here to kick it away. And he returns this to the 22. There's Tyler Lockett and the rest of his Seattle teammates coming out for the next possession. Good day for him so far here in the third quarter. He's hit pay dirt once, over 100 yards, but hey, it's the third quarter. He's thinking, I want more, right? He wants more, and it just increases the confidence of his team because every play he makes... That means his quarterback is really feeling good about throwing the football. Probably feels like he can't throw an incomplete pass when he throws it to him right now. Yeah, he's looked really, really sharp. Now Gino on first down. And this one is incomplete. And try to find Jackson Smith and Jigba. That'll bring up second down. Smith now to throw. Escaping the pressure right. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. And give him 10 that time as he was able to get away from the pressure and get a nice game. And the Giants will go with six defensive backs here on third. A shotgun snap for Smith. And incomplete here to bring up fourth down as the rookie couldn't haul it in. They sure went against conventional wisdom, calling a pass on third and inches. Had to be thinking to themselves, the defense is going to overcommit against the run. Should be an easy pitch and catch. Didn't turn out that way. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on for the fifth time here today. Here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return, and it will be first and 10 as they take over. Jones and the Giants now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And that one complete to Hodgins. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. They'll 
operate from the 32 yard line here second and three off play action Jones well that'll be incomplete no, he took a shot as he let that go and it's going to bring up a third down. Well, this at least is the right idea. I think they've got to get the tight end more involved. He had just one target in the first half, incomplete. Now incomplete here with the first target of the second half. Yeah, should not stop them at all from going back to him, though. Find him. Find him. On third down, Barkley. And he's brought down the following a pretty juke move that gets him the first down. 89 yards for him on the ground now on that, his 20th carry of the ball game. Offensive linemen are famous for doing their job no matter who's carrying the ball, but when they have the confidence that the person carrying it can break off big-time runs, it makes them block just a little bit harder. Jones now throwing on first down, and his throw here is incomplete. Even in today's NFL, when we think of the tight end position now as really a glorified wide receiver, we're still asking a lot of those guys. They have to block as well, and every now and then, they don't come down with the football. Now a second and ten. Off the play fake, Jones. They'll roll him out right, and he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a hole. He'll wind up getting four there on his own, but it will leave him now with a third down situation. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Catch made here by Campbell. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. So the completion good for just three. And that'll bring up fourth down. Here's Jamie Gillen now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here, as this is toward the sideline. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. Tyler Lockett trotting onto the field, getting set for this next drive. They might want to mix something up defensively because he's been shredding them a bit, hasn't he? That he has, and even with all the changes that you know are going on on the defensive side of the ball, he's still finding ways to get open, finding the right spots, and the delivery's been pretty good, too. He's over 100 yards, has the one touchdown score to this point. To about the 33-yard line. This is second and eight. Throwing now is Gino. He completes this to Walker. So five yards here, five on the play. And now we've got a third down and three. Dallas up the middle. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. There are a lot of different formulas to winning football, but one constant over the years, winning on third down. That pickup there was big because they had struggled throughout this one. On first down, Smith. Steps away to his left. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. Smith. And Walker has it. And he's down right around midfield after a gain of two, maybe three.
A couple extra tight ends in the formation here as they line up third and two. From the 50, it's Smith. That is caught, and he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. So he turned to a trusted, familiar face in that third down situation. It paid off. Yeah, you go to your veteran receiver in that spot, so you can't underestimate him when he's on the field defensively. Make sure you know where he is because he understands how to get open in key situations. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Second down and a yard. On the counter, it's Walker. Nothing doing. Barely able to muster a yard to hit the 35. So third and inches, and this will be the ninth play of the drive. Now Gino. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. For many people, that's not your standard play call in that third down situation. But for so many offenses, they just want the ball in the hands of their playmakers in open space. And after he caught it, he did a nice job picking up the first down. Now a play fake, and it's Smith. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. From the 24 now, here's the second and nine. To throw with Smith. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. It's Deontay Banks with it. And the Giants are going to take possession here at their own 16-yard line. Well, we saw plenty of that during his much-heralded college career. He parlayed that into becoming a first-round selection. And now here he is making interceptions in the National Football League. And this is a guy that has all the physical tools, but the thing that sets him apart is what he's got between his ears. And that's the sixth sense for knowing where the football is going. Just an excellent play there to create the turnover. Jones and the Giants now with a first and 10 at their own 16. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Short throw going to be caught by Waller. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. 12 yards that time for number 12 as they move the chains. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one-score game. First and 10 here. Out of the shotgun, they run with Barkley. There he goes, left side. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. A big play on the ground there. It goes for 36 yards. Perfect execution on that inside handoff, and then a little will, a little brute strength to move forward after the contact. What do we call that now in today's NFL? Heck, in today's football? Contact balance, right? That's the buzzword, the phrase you hear. A back who can absorb contact, bounce off of it, and keep moving. Just what you said, brute strength, force of will. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. And I can see the officials kind of looking at each other down there, silently wondering, does this meet the level of grounding? Fortunately, he did have a receiver in the area, but I have seen less obvious throwaways called as penalties. To throw on second and 10, Jones. And too much juice, it'll be out of bounds, incomplete. 
And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And this is going to be caught, but they'll say out of bounds. So it's incomplete. Well, right now, the story of this game continuing to be the defenses because the offenses, they're finding it difficult to establish any rhythm whatsoever. I like how you come to us in praise of defense, Brandon, because that's exactly right. That was an incompletion force there, but we've seen it throughout this game. Both of these defense coordinators, they're a step ahead of their offensive counterparts. So it's a rare two-miss ball game for him now. Normally one of the more dependable guys you're going to find around. Very unlike him. One of the better kickers in the NFL. And I don't think there's anything wrong with him physically or mechanically. He's just having one of those games. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and ten. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Over the middle, that's caught by Metcalf. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. Brings up second and a yard at the Giants 47-yard line. Ball on the 47-yard line. Here's second and a yard. Now it's Smith off the bootleg. He's got his big tight end, Fan. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. On first down, it's Smith. And he's going to lose yardage here. As they will switch ends as time has run out on this third quarter of play. So both teams trade touchdowns in the third as we're through three quarters of play. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Welcome back now here in East Rutherford. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. From the gun, here's Smith. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. And the Giants are right back in this football game. A critical error there in a tight game of the fourth. All you talk about is taking care of the football, and especially with a lead here in the fourth quarter, turning it over, now the door is open for the opposition. Just in general, when you're passing in the fourth quarter with a lead, no matter at what point, you gotta be super careful. Gotta be careful, and sometimes you can be so careful that you end up running yourself into an error. Jones and the Giants now with a first and 10 on their side of midfield at the 47. He'll drop to throw. Being chased out left. Big yardage there on the scramble, and it gets him a first down. Well, that turned out better than most of the passes. He could have thrown on that snap. The coverage downfield was excellent, but the containment close to home left him a backdoor escape and they pay dearly for not locking up. Throwing Jones. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Whenever I see a drop like that, I have to kind of take a step back and check myself a little bit. So used to seeing those big guys make big time spectacular plays that when they drop one, I have to remind myself, we ask a lot out of these guys. Block and catch the football, not easily done in today's NFL. 
On second down, here's Barkley. They'll get him to the ground at the 20, following a pickup of four. Third down and six. Going in motion left, that's Campbell. Uh, here's a fake on the jet sweep as they'll go instead with Barkley. And he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. Just a gain of two there, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stopped them for almost no gain. So the field goal unit is on the field, as this is a big spot right here. This one from 35 yards away. Gano's kick is good. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. Well, you talk about clutch. That one was right down Broadway, and this game's all even here in the fourth. Yeah, he didn't leave any doubt, did he? Good snap, good hold, dead center. Almost like a big-time golfer in a major, firing at a pin from the fairway, trying to win the tournament going down the stretch. This one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. And this taken in at the goal line. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. And out now come the Seahawks. Well, the bad news, they had the turnover last time. The good news, their defense only surrendered three. So now we are set up for a great finish. All tied here in the fourth. Now Smith and the Seahawks going to come up first and 10 at their own 24. Hands it to Walker to begin the series. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back, those are the ones you focus on and want to take away. And they've done that pretty successfully in this game. Right there, he rose to the occasion late in a close game. It's something he thought about, dreamed about, and worked on throughout his career. Because in these types of situations, he wasn't going to allow extra coverage to keep him from getting the football. The Seahawks on third down. They're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. This time they face a third and two. On third down, here's Walker. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. First down, Seattle on a pickup of 13. Great pickup by Walker. It was the second back off the board in the 2022 draft. But he was first among rookies in carries, yards, and touchdowns, and was rookie of the year runner-up. Now a first down throw. It's Smith. Targeting the out route, and he completes this to Metcalf. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. It'll go as a gain of four, and that'll bring up second down. Back to throw, Smith. And that's going to be caught downfield by Fan. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Giants' 23. A really good pickup of 28 yards. First and 10, Smith. 
He finds his man complete. That's Walker. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. So the completion good for six yards, and it's second down. And that's now four completions in a row, a good bounce back following the interception last drive. Certainly not letting it affect him, that's for sure. And we all know interceptions are going to happen. So the big trick, don't let it affect you going forward. Most of the good quarterbacks, they just tell the ball boy, get that one out of the rotation, give me a fresh ball, and let's go. He's got his offense moving again. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. And when you've thrown as many interceptions as he has in this one, you definitely start getting a little hesitant to throw the ball out wide because that's prime pick six territory. That time, he made sure the only guy who was going to catch it was sitting in the third row. Up the middle they run, it's Walker. And he's got the first down as he gets it to the eight. That's good for nine yards as they convert on the third down play. Well, partner, this drive has been a model of efficiency. They've done everything they've wanted to. And the defensive guys, they've got to be getting frustrated. They can't figure out how to get off the field. Geno now to throw. His pass caught at the four. Touchdown! Tyler Lockett with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Seahawks have broken this deadlock and have taken the lead here in the fourth. So still time remaining here in this fourth quarter, but the touchdown there puts them back out in front. And you and I both know that their defense will not very subtly remind everyone that they started all of this because they held firm on the last drive and only gave up a field goal. Gave it back to the offense in a tie game and said, okay, your turn now, make something happen. And they went down the field and scored. And after the touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The New York set to take the field. They now trail by seven after that last touchdown here in the fourth quarter. What a big spot for this offense. See if they can cobble something together on this drive. Jones and the Giants now with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. A big play there for the Giants. 41 yards. Well, part, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they put field position there? A nice attacking play that picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Jones fakes the give to Barkley. That ball caught by Campbell. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. Give him 30 yards there. This defense is definitely reeling a little bit now. Back-to-back -back big plays give it up. And you know what's all defenses talk about. How do you limit that? Instead, they got hit by one-two punch those last couple of plays, and now they've got their backs to the goal line. A looming decision to make on the conversion down seven, but first things first, they need to score as they come up on first and goal. Barkley, and ultimately this won't go for much, maybe a couple, but boy, he showed off that make-you-miss ability that certainly is in his arsenal. So they've been in the red zone three times, and it's yielded just three points. Can they find the end zone here on second and goal? Barkley again. And good work there defensively as they're able to keep him out of the end zone. 
Call it a gain of a couple. The defense stiffening here. It's third and goal. Sometimes you're aligned perfectly and the play comes to you, and sometimes you got to cover some ground to go make the play as we just saw there. We saw a great, great example of perseverance right there on that play. Got to be careful. They might want to throw one over his head as this game progresses. And Barkley will try to punch it in. And he is in. Touchdown, New York. Saquon Barkley. A touchdown run there from a yard out. And the Giants are an extra point away from tying this game here on the fourth. But we are set up for a fantastic finish now. A fourth quarter touchdown here. We're an extra point away from a tie football game. And I know they're thinking about possibly going for two, but I'd go ahead and kick this one and just get it back to level. Don't forget the extra point. It's up and good. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. This one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. And all in all, a pretty solid return. Nearly got it to the 35. They'll mark him down officially at the 34. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And they no longer have the lead after that last touchdown. All tied up in the fourth quarter. And a chance for this offense to mount a potential game-winning drive right here. Now Smith and the Seahawks going to come up first and 10 at the 34. Throwing now is Geno. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Normally, you think the tight end is going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact, but in this case, maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well. Incomplete. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and ten. Now back to throw. Had his hands on it, but dropped it. The rookie making a little bit of a rookie mistake. Third down. Whenever I see an in route dropped, as we just saw in that play, I'm always thinking that in the back of their mind, they're worried about what's coming at them because they're going towards traffic on that route as opposed to being away from it and maybe having a little bit more space. Throwing on third down, Smith. Work in the middle of the field and he's got a man complete. And he is gonna have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. Running left is Walker. He'll take this to the 46. Here's second and seven. Smith now to throw. It's caught. Lockett. And Lockett going to pick up a Seahawks first down as he's inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. He's been big. Two touchdowns earlier. Now he's got a first down here. Up the middle, here's Walker. And this defense not ready for that one as he'll take this down inside the 25. It's a gain of 15, first down Seahawks. Blocking at the point of attack there was very strong. He had a couple of running lanes. And I never want to overlook the offensive line, but that's what they get paid to do. How about the quarterback? Everyone thinks all he's going to do is throw the football. His movement and deception can help a running game as well. And Smith's throw caught here by Metcalf. And out of bounds right around the 20.
Second and six coming up. On second down, it's Walker. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. I think we got to give it up for him right there. That's a heck of an athletic move for a big man right in the middle of the line. How about the play he makes there? Nowhere to run, and he finishes that one off for a loss. Getting down to the good stuff. All tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. And they're facing a big third down now in this tie ball game. They run again with Walker. The Giants going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This for the lead in the final stages. Myers' kick is good. And they have taken the lead here in the final two minutes. Big kick right there to give them the lead in the fourth, but there is still time left for a final drive. Did they score too soon? Post game will tell us, right? Depending on what happens on this drive, that's how we'll analyze it. If the other team scores, they scored too soon. If they somehow hold on, they manage the clock exactly right. Jason Myers, Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. So now Jones and the Giants down 20 to 17. A minute 51 on the clock. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Jones. And this turns into a nice gain with a slide at the end. Plenty of time and two timeouts still at their disposal. First and ten here. Now he steps away. And this turns into a nice game with a slide at the end. He's been making himself a weapon as a runner, and the results, they've been welcomed by his offense. My question is about the defense we're watching right now, partner. Even after he got him with a scramble earlier this drive, they still aren't devoting enough attention to him. I would expect that after that carry, they'll do a much better job going forward, spying on him on passing downs. Finding Sterling Shepard for his first catch. Now the Giants will use the second of their three timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in the fourth. They'll come up first and ten here. First down carry for Barkley. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. I know they got a little yardage there, but I'm not sure their investment is right. They're still running the football, and I'm not sure there's enough time to continue to do that. They'll come up now on second down. Jones. He'll get this underneath, dropping it off for Barkley. The Giants going to burn their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in the game. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. This to potentially send us to overtime. 
Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. So Jones off, Graham Gano on here for the New York Giants field goal. This to tie things up in the final minute. Gano's kick is good. And that will tie this game here in the final minute of play. So in the final minute, they turn it over to their kicker to get him back to even, and he does not disappoint. Brandon, do you think the pressure ever gets to this guy? Because I sure don't. That was pretty smooth right there. But I tell you, he better not rest on his laurels because there's a good chance they may need him again if this game goes to overtime. This one, all we could have asked for. All tied, final minute, as the kick's away here. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Here's first and 10. Walker now at first and 10. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. And we've got free football. Four quarters done. And we're dead even. We'll have overtime after this timeout. So it's the Seahawks who are going to get the first crack at things. They'll possess it to start things off here in overtime. Dallas now to return it from his end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. And the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. Smith and the Seahawks going to come up first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. Here's Walker to start the drive. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. Big Leonard Williams, the one who came in and got him. Moving backwards on first down, never a good thing. What does that do for the mindset on second down? Well, it changes your play call, definitely, because as a play call, you're advancing yourself, thinking, okay, we're going to get a gain here. Now you've got to go back in reverse, come up with something to pick up not just the yardage lost, but gain a few extra. Smith on the slant. Here's Smith and Jigba. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. Out of the gun, Smith. Going right back to Smith and Jigba. It'll go down as a gain of six, and it'll be second down. A well, little dinking and dunking that they're doing. It, at some point, is it appropriate to maybe take a shot? It is, if you feel good about it. But otherwise, you do what a coach told me a long time ago. Take what they give you, but make them tackle. In other words, get it to one of your guys in space. If he makes someone miss, that could turn into the big play you're looking for. Throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. That's an excellent play by the defender. He diagnosed that one. Close quickly. It helped force the incompletion. And 
It's third and four. Big play here, trying to keep this opening drive of overtime alive. A shotgun snap for Smith. He's going to have the first down and more than that. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So he hooked up with a veteran there, and in overtime, that's not a bad idea. Go with the age and the experience. Yeah, because sometimes the young guys, they give you the fresh legs and give you all that bounce. But in this type of a situation, sometimes those legs slow down a little bit as the enormity of the moment overwhelms them. The veteran guys, they tend to come through. Now Smith, they're complete to Smith and Jigba. And he's down right around midfield after a gain of two, maybe three. Second and seven. From the 50, it's Smith. Pass incomplete. So third down coming up. But Charles, I guess the question for me, where does four down territory begin possible? I guess for me it begins if you have four and five or less because you've got to understand your team and know what your play calls are. What do you have that you think you're confident that you can pick up that type of yardage? It might be fourth and three for some teams, but I think anything under fourth and five, they'll think about going for it. That is caught. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Giants' 39. 12 yards on third down as the drive rolls on. Shaping up to be a very efficient opening drive here in overtime. And can you feel the tension building? Because I'm feeling it, all right? I've got, the, I've got the sweaty palms here with each play because of the enormity of what's going on. Each play means so much in overtime, and they're handling it well as this drive continues. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Jackson Smith and Jigba, the one he was after there. But it's going to be second down. Smith. It's complete to lock it. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Giants 28. That'll put him up over 160 yards receiving now for the game. They can't seem to stop it. Now Gino on first down. Short throw to Disley. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that's going to bring up second down. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. So second and four from the 22. Throwing is Smith. To the sideline and incomplete. And that's the knowledge you gain from being in this league for a long time. He's learned the hard way when to give up and fight another down. And that's a smart move to throw it away. It's third and four. Big play here, trying to keep this opening drive of overtime alive. Here's Smith. This one into the hands of Metcalf. And oh, he's just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. If this were baseball, we'd call this small ball. Instead of pushing it downfield, they throw a short pass trying to pick up the first down. But the defense rallies to the football and stops him short, bringing up a fourth down. Myers' kick is good. And they have regained the lead. So they do get the short field goal here to get them the all-important overtime lead. But, Charles, you wonder if they'll wind up ruining the fact that they were able to get down into the red zone, yet not able to find the touchdown that would have won them the game. Brandon, you're absolutely right. In overtime, when you get the ball first, the hope is your opponents never see the football. But now they're going to get a drive to try and win it, or at least keep the game alive with a field goal. And I'm getting a dictionary out to look up ruin. <laughs> Let's go, 
So only a field goal on that opening drive of overtime. Will that hold up? We'll find out as it kicks away. On the return, here's Gary Brightwell. Escapes the defender. The New York set to take the field. Well, it's pretty simple now. They need a field goal out of this drive to extend overtime or obviously, Charles, a touchdown to win it. Yeah, and I'm taking the defense's perspective on this one, partner, because now they know with a three-point lead, they can afford to give that up because you just keep playing, right? Overtime gets extended. But if you give up the touchdown, it's game over. So on offense, every play you make, you've got to try and get just a little bit more out of each one in order to try and get to the end zone because they're going to put everyone back keep everything in front. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. That good for 22 and a first down. Now that's a big time run. Lightning in a bottle, forget it. He exploded out of the bottle for that type of a pickup. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. They'll run it again with Barkley. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. 170 yards rushing for him now as he is just trying to will his guys to an overtime victory. Options galore here. Second and a few inches. Now it's Jones' turn in overtime. That is caught downfield. It's Waller. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 26. 23 yards to pick up there. But normally, you see three tight ends in a formation. You have to think to yourself, this has got to be a run. And I know as a safety, when I saw that, I took an extra step or two towards the line of scrimmage. Instead, they threw the ball, and he found one of those tight ends for a very nice pickup. Throwing Jones. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Oh, one of the linebackers has got it. And they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. And for the visitors, it is going to be a happy flight home. It is always such a treat, Charles, in the NFL when you can go on the road and get a victory, and that's exactly what they accomplished here today. Ah, oh, the trip home so much sweeter, isn't it? All the noise they heard before, how tough it is to win on the road, how tough it is to play in this stadium, how hyped up that crowd's going to be. They just used it as fuel, came in full confidence, believed in themselves, and got it done.